I mean, a lot of race wins, a lot of pole. These guys are killing me. <laughs> I was doing all I could not to break. <laughs> yeah, the guys have been making fun of me. I mean, I'm I'm not known as the guy in front of the camera. I'm right. always behind the camera, so. Right. I'm finally glad that you cornered Dark and finally got him to man up and do the interview. I'm Thanks, so Steve. proud of you, Kevin. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Welcome to Humans Are Racing, where we provide a virtual paddock pass to meet the people that work behind the scenes at motorsports. To see all of our behind the scenes videos, be sure to click on the like and subscribe buttons. In today's video, we're going to get to know the VP of Marketing for Schmidt Peterson Motorsports, Jeff Darks. So let's get going. This has been a, a much anticipated interview, Jeff. Where are you from? I am originally from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Hendersonville, uh, Tennessee. Suburb Hendersonville, Tennessee. Hendersonville. Yes. Okay. Let's get that. Let's get that right. All right. Um, suburb outside of Nashville, so I grew up uh, with the Nashville scene. What uh, What is your job title here? Job title with Smith Peterson Motorsports is VP of Marketing. Okay. So what does that mean? Um, if I come by, it looks I like think the, cl the cliff around, note so. version is that, <laughs> and people ask a lot, what do I do with the team? Um, you know, we have an engineering side, mechanic side. Those guys make the car go fast, right. and uh, my job is to make the car look pretty. Okay, very good. Uh, and my, you do have some of the nicest looking cars. Well, thanks. Appreciate that. In the that. paddock. Uh, do you feel like uh, being up front these first two races makes your car look that much better? Well, it, it never hurts, it for hurt. sure. Yeah. So do you take some credit for that? Like, does, does the sexiness <sighs> increase its speed at all? Uh... Well, if you talk to the engineering staff, you know they they'd always like to have the car a little lighter. Sure, sure. Um, so they're always always working with me on trying to help the aerodynamics. But uh, but no, yeah, we take we take pride in that. We think uh, the chrome scheme has kind of been our thing lately yeah. for the last few years, and, yeah. and it kind of stuck, and uh, we we rolled with it. So okay, very cool. So Jeff, how long have you been in this business? Uh, I have been in IndyCar racing. Uh, started in 1995 with Team Penske. Yeah and uh, just kind of worked, worked my way up from there. Wow. Did you ever take time away from racing? I did. I took a little little hiatus from 2005 to 2010. And uh, What did you do during that time? I, I actually opened a small business with a yeah. friend of mine. Uh, we sold small equipment and um, found myself clawing my way back into IndyCar <laughs> racing. I, I missed it and, uh, and got back into it again. So this is a common theme with people I talk to in the paddock is they might step away for a little bit, but then they come back. Why is that? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think once you've been inside the ropes, and yeah. you know, it's it's a small fraternity and community amongst all of us that work in, in the paddock here, and you kind of miss that camaraderie. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's like being in a fraternity, I guess, in college. Right. It's just you know everybody looks out for each other, and, and you miss that. So yeah. Yeah. I found myself first year out of racing I actually attended the Indy 500 set in the grandstands as a fan yeah. and literally couldn't even make it through the entire race I had to leave wow. so it was, wow. it was tough yeah I can I can I can believe that um, so you uh, are unique in a way in that um, your guys' race shop it's not the first team you worked for in that race shop is that correct yeah funny story so I was I uh, was with Kelly racing uh, back from 19 98 to 2004 mm -hmm. and uh, we had moved into a, a new to us facility mm -hmm. on the west side of town and uh, once Kelly Racing dissolved uh, that, that formed into Vision Racing and then uh, six years later Sam bought the race shop and lo and behold I'm back in the same office I was with Kelly Racing. Literally the same office? Literally the same office. Were there any like nuances about that office that you Appreciate it seeing again, like a crack in the wall or anything like that. No, no, just the, it was just like time stood still. Nothing yeah. had changed. Uh, Vision Racing had not really updated the shop at all, so it was still exactly like I left it. Wow. So. Can you talk about the difficulty of being in a sport where people are always in the spotlight, and your job is kind of to be behind the scenes? Works out perfect for me. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem hiding from the camera. Yeah. Um, it's funny. My <laughs> wife will occasionally send me a screenshot or screen capture of myself ducking in behind a driver or something yeah. on camera, and yeah. I try to avoid that at all costs. Yeah. But that's funny. So when uh, you end up under the dirt, way way in the future, what do you want your legacy to be? How do you want to be remembered within this within this paddock? Uh, just. Just as a good guy, you yeah. know, guy that was fun to work with, and yeah. guy worked hard at his job, and 
had everybody's best interest in mind and was here was here for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, you have a family. You mentioned I have your a wife, family. I do have a, I have an 18 year old son getting ready to turn 19. Uh, wow. Matter of fact, he's flying the nest next Friday, wow. move, moving out of the house. So exciting for him. Yeah. Um, and then I have an eight year old at home. And so how is it balancing your work life with the family life? Um, I am very fortunate that I have, that I have a great wife at home yeah. that, that handles that for me. Uh, if yeah. it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be able to do my job. Yeah. There's no yeah. way. So a lot of people that aren't mechanically inclined or they can't be a driver like I was when I was a kid, you know, I, I look at someone like you and I say, wow, that's a pretty cool job. What could I do as a high schooler or someone in college to prepare or train myself to someday have your job? Well, I, you know, I from my experience, I can't really tell you the proper path because my path was it was kind of odd. I, yeah. I fell into racing, um, not by choice. Mm -hmm. um, I, my plan was to do it for one year, travel the country, and then go get a normal normal day job, which yeah. I had before I, I got into any car racing. Yeah. And then um, I quickly became addicted to IndyCar racing. I never watched an IndyCar race before I got into it. Wow. Um, I was a NASCAR fan growing up in the South. So, you know, when I attended my first race and I, I became hooked. And, and then I wanted to actually work for the team, mm -hmm. not having any mechanical experience. Um, I went and got my CDL, learned how to drive the transporter. Cool. Drove the transporter for about four years. Um, so obviously I worked with the team directly. Um, and then at that point, my general manager at the time, he, he slightly remembered that I did have a college degree and he asked what that was and told him I had a marketing and advertising degree. And he said, well, I'm gonna move you in the office and give you a shot at doing some marketing wow. things. And, and it just evolved from there. That's cool. How, you said racing kind of fell in your lap. How did you get that first job? Uh, Again, the Cliff Notes version, I lived in Tennessee, a friend of mine was working for Team Penske, yeah. um, traveling with Rusty Wallace's Miller Genuine Draft show car, yeah. and I thought, man, that's a dream job, I want to do that, so yeah. he got me an interview, uh, they hired me, but with the caveat of they did not have any openings in NASCAR, so they said, we'll put you on our IndyCar program, then when we, when we get a, an, an opening, we'll put you in on the NASCAR program. Right. Well, again, I, I quickly fell in love with IndyCar racing, and there was an opportunity later in the year, yeah. and I turned it down and stayed on the IndyCar program. Right. So just last question. Growing up, you mentioned being a NASCAR fan. Who were some of the drivers that you kind of looked up to as, as a fan of the sport? In NASCAR? Yeah. Um, you know, you got to mention Earnhardt, uh, Rusty Wallace. He obviously drove for Panin Pinsky at the time. Yeah. Um, and just all of them. I, I, I loved watching racing. I loved to attend the race, obviously. Yeah. When I was younger, it was, you know, we would go camp out. And yeah. So it, it's kind of it's kind of fun to look back at that and say, you know, I used to be on the other side of the fence. And yeah. So for me, it's still a dream job. I mean, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you for the time. A lot of people have been waiting to hear from you, so we appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad you finally tracked me down and <laughs> we were able to do this. Yeah, thanks again, man. Good yeah, luck to you. Absolutely. Thanks, All guys. Right.